Okay, the next step here in the procedure is making sure that we have our stops positioned. So the very first stop here is the furthest most point of travel which eliminates the valve from running off of the end of the stone. This is, called, this is what's called a bump stop. As you can see, it bumps on its stop. It's very important to make sure that the bump stop is set correctly so that it can be used to travel further to the end of the stone but not off the end of the stone. The next stop that we have to position is our backstop to eliminate the table from moving too far back causing the valve face to walk off the end of the grinding stone. If it walks off the end of the grinding stone it can cause chipping of the valve stone, it can cause distortion and spiraling of the face angle on the valve. So what we want to do is position it now, here's our bump stop, I want to bring it back so that it does not come off of the stone. We loosen this apparatus off and lock it back down and adjust as required. Okay, so now here's my effective travel I'm going to be using with bump stop so that the stone stays in constant contact with the valve face. And as you can see, here is our backstop travel. Here's our forward stop travel and our bump stop travel. Okay, now allowing full contact, full use of the freshly dressed stone to give us an appropriate grinding aspect on the face of this valve. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to start up our piece of equipment. And you can see that we're in no contact right now with the valve or with the stone. We want to supply the valve with the appropriate lubrication for cutting. Sometimes takes a little bit to get it up there and we want to have as much oil as possible directed onto the face angle of the valve. Now what we need to do is go mid travel on the stone and we need to establish a contact point or a cut point. So I'm going to bring the motor up until I listen for an audible tone. We want to do it slowly and precisely. The measurement's not important at this point, but we need to make and establish a contact point. You can hear and probably see that it's actually started to make contact. From this point, we need to get an index marker to establish where we've made contact and how far from there we're cutting or grinding into the face of the valve surface. Now that we've established a contact point, what we need to do is we need to hold the index wheel and dial our micrometer around to the zero pointer line right here. This allows us to have a record of how much material we're cutting off because whatever we do to the face of the valve, we still need to do to the stem of the valve in order to put it back into the head assembly in the correct installed height position. Okay, next thing we need to do now that we've established our, our contact cut and we've established zero on our index wheel is to move the valve across the face, dialing it in as we move it. You can see I'm going to bump stop here and you can see the definitive line showing up on the valve where it's starting to correct a slightly out of round or distorted surface. So as I continue, we're into one thou of cut now. I'm going to use the whole stone and you can see the surface of the valve correcting itself as we move through the process. Three thou. Four thou. Most valves should take no more than about five thou to recorrect a bad pitted position or bad pitting on the surface of the valve. If it takes more than that, you're actually cutting it too far into the valve material, into the hardening of the valve, and then at the end of it, we'll be cutting off the stem, and that will cause an incorrect installed dimension in the cylinder head. Now. I've already gone four thou on the increment wheel and I'm just going to have a look at it and it looks like we have a fairly even cut on this face. 
to ensure that I haven't missed any little pitting or any surface, surface distortions, I'm going to add one more thou as a safeguard. That gives us a five thou equal value that we've taken off of the surface. Now, the important part, the next important step, is to ensure that when the valve is done being cut, the face is done being uh, dressed, that we move the motor away from it and not directly into it. If we move it directly into it, then we distort the valve and the valve is damaged. So we can move this out. We can back off our stop, move the valve away from the stone and stop the arbor. When we stop the arbor, we can release the chuck head and we can do an inspection on the valve and the next valve is ready to go through the process.